delighted to see uh, Jews and Irishmen come together. It's always it's always been my fervent hope to see that bridge, see that bridge made. Bridge so those Jews and Irishmen. Exactly. That's what we aim to do. That was the battle we wanted to solve. <laughs> That's right. Well, it apparently you had some fun on the set making this film. Now, how did you, uh, first of all, Paul, how did you start with this idea? The idea was really uh, selfish. I wanted to go to Ireland. Um, <laughs> the actual, I mean, truly, I had seen Local Hero um, in 1982, and I was just stuck on the idea, like, I want to do that. I want to go to the beautiful countryside uh, and make a movie. I met Peter Rieger at one time, who was the star local hero, and I said, what was the experience like? And he said, exactly like you think. I went, oh, really? I went, <laughs> it was like, you know, please tell me it's stocked and it rained. No, it was beautiful. So I, for years, never really worked hard on it, but I, ha I had this desire to do it. And um, so, and, I, and a couple of years ago, I, I thought I should probably maybe I need a partner. And uh, somebody introduced me to Wally, Wally Marzano Lesnovich, the longest name in any uh, screen credit. And uh, we had never met. And uh, he just was a smart, great collaborator. And I said, New York guy goes to Ireland. I don't know why. That was literally all we had. And then we said, well, what if it was family? And what if there was something that he was entitled to? Or maybe he was trying to... And then it sort of slowly... You know, it was a wonderful process. And we just thought, you know, there was no deadline. We were doing this at our leisure. And then we came and said, well, what if they're related? And then what if it was really about something? Well, we sort of backed into the opening scene where Colin Meany's father is watching the news. And it's one channel after another of just conflict, conflict, people hurting each other, killing each other. And as an old man going, what is, what is wrong? What is the problem with people? Why can't we get along? And the kickoff to the story is, who am I to talk? Let's at least, can we get our family together? So he sends his son off to make peace, basically. The idea being, if we can't solve the world, let's at least solve a small piece of the world. And uh, that was, it was great to have that sort of big scale idea, but it was couched in sort of, hopefully subliminally, in this very light, uplifting movie, which is really just about two well-intended knuckleheads who just can't get out of their own way to do the right thing. Yeah, that's that's the nice thing about this. And, and Chris, you do a great job of bringing this out as well, that these are two nice guys who mm -hmm. find themselves doing unnice things. They never stop being nice guys, but they do unnice things. Is it, it was was that the light touch you had to bring to it uh, to 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 tell the story? Yeah, I mean, it, the great thing about about working with Paul and Colm if they're such kind of stalwarts in their own right, it, it is the nuance of their performances was actually revealed to me. I didn't draw it out of them. You know, I just hopefully just set up an arena for for them to kind of, you know, get this petty one up and chip going um, and, and let them do their thing. My, my role as really as the director was just to make sure that, you know, it was set in a world that felt authentic, that wasn't too schmaltzy that was giving them a supporting cast that, again, felt authentic and didn't feel like cartoon characters. And then, you know, as I say, let, let them do their thing. And, that, and I think directing for, the, for a greater part with really good actors is sort of setting up a playpen, really, uh, like you might do for two little children. And you put them in, and, uh, and if the playpen's strong enough, they're going to they're gonna fight around in there and something good's going to come out of it. So I, I really give that credit and, and those performances to, to Colm and Paul themselves. Yeah, you know, one of the things, the great thing about Colin, he's such a solid actor. I mean, you know, theater training, he's a legend in Ireland. I mean, he's walking around Dublin with Colomini. It's like walking in the Bronx with De Niro. It's like everybody knows him. Everybody loves him. Everybody approaches him. And he's such a solid guy, physically and, and emotionally. He's just really bright and well-read and opinionated and, you know, happy to give you his opinion and seemingly <laughs> seemingly uh unmovable but at the same time he's really a, a putty cat and there's a sweetness to him and you know and he's a, a great dad and he was uh you know and he's just and so it's all there you know and you know my character is like 
well, he's clearly a devoted father and he's a good guy, but you might not want to cross him in business because he's going to get really aggressive and petty. And Colm has that and his character has that. So it was really fun. To me, it's always fun to find find the humanity in the otherwise unlikable people. You know, and I think both characters are likable, but we're sort of going backwards. They start off nice and then one, you know, and I think that's the way most people are. We'll give you the benefit of the doubt, uh, but now you just made me question you and now I'm a little suspicious and now it's going to spin out of control. But at the, the heart of this movie is what I hope is the heart of people. It's like, you know, we all want the same thing, right? So let's see if we can't get there. And there's a scene where Combs just going, I think he's thinking the worst things about my character. He goes, I think he did this on purpose. I think he came. And I think Chris said, you're in a cartoon here. So we're going to just picture your Bugs Bunny and you're just spinning out of control. And you see Cologne getting so animated. I went, that was a brilliant direction. Like he's a cartoon. And he wouldn't have gone there if Chris had not suggested that. But he went. And, um, you know, that's part of the beauty of, of movie making is collaboration. You know, Chris was often tell me, even though I wrote it, we go, yeah, bring it down, bring it up, bring it, you know. Um, and and they, and we were so lucky that the supporting cast, the rest of the cast, was so great and just lit up the screen. Jane Levy kills me. I just, I just every time she's on screen and Sheila Flinton, who plays the, uh, the uh, innkeeper, the 90 year old innkeeper who she was in uh, Banshees of Anna Sheeran and a bit of a evil character in that, that was sort of an old hag. And she was the opposite in this. She's just this ball of light and so funny. She was I mean, like she's the, she's, on steroids. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's the, she's the broadest we went. And, and I remember we made a, a decision about, about that because Sheila as a character is quite broad. She's very exuberant. And we thought, actually, you know, this is a good. She's a good level of kind of craziness. And it's believable because she does play someone who's her age. She does play a 90-year-old lady who is full of kind of charisma and effervescence. Uh, and just seeing that sort of almost with her, you just light the touch paper and you just let it kind of let her spin away and do her thing. And I, I love the light touches she brings to it. She's fantastic in it. You have so many nice touches with those characters with those other characters. And the other thing that that struck us both is that you went out of your way almost to to make these people uh, accepting and diverse and uh, accepting of diversity, something that traditionally you may not uh, see as part of the Irish psyche. And I, I, I appreciated that you did that. Ireland is actually a lot more progressive than, than people would give it credit for. I think we get the idea that it's sort of, you know, a quaint backwater, but it's leading the way in so many things. Uh, and, you know, our Irish people and Irish communities, that they, they are a, a bit more progressive and a bit, a bit sort of sharper than you, than you might think. And that's what we tried to do is show that authentically. And hopefully we did that. Yeah. And it's new. I mean, it's in the last 30 years or 40 years that they've made some strides. Like, OK, well, that's proof positive. Um, I saw a beautiful thing, uh, uh, Irish, I guess it's a late night talk show. And he just did a, a sign off the other night addressing what's going on in, in Israel and it was just a, a a ray of light and he said you know I come from a place where we thought we'd never get past this and the Irish and we had you know he grew up in the in the in the troubles mm -hmm. and he said he goes I'm just here to say that we are sitting here now and living in peace and you go okay that's pretty <laughs> that's pretty promising it's doable you know the problems were man-made the solutions can be man-made too yes we have to ask one more question in the wedding was delightful, absolutely delightful, and pulling in all of the traditions from both sides. Uh, did you ever think about ending it with a horror? Putting them up on chairs, you know <laughs> that 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 whole that whole thing. No, you no, know, you know what we? It's funny. Some of it was uh, last minute. You know, it was never meant to even be particular. The only bit we had was the breaking of the glass, which was meant to be a perfunctory. Like, is this where you do the thing with the glass that your people enjoy? Um, and then I, and. When they put the the prayer shawl over the two of them, I, that wasn't even in the script, and that came on the set. And I went, I don't, I don't know, that might be more, uh, more than I bargained for. But like, it was sweet. It's, I, I had never, I didn't even know that particular tradition. So no, we weren't going to, you know. Again, it was meant to be a melding. So I never wanted it to lean too far left or right that anybody would feel unwelcome. Um, one of the lines, and I, and I love that you popped in, Chris, for this on the close up when the uh, 
the uh, the woman doing the 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 minister basically the police woman doing the says he goes on the grace of God and punch it goes and that can be any god you like and I went that's really kind of the name of the movie it was like yeah whatever you like it's all fine with me and but and she had such a sweet face another great actress I forget what's her name Jeez, I can't Emma uh, Emma Morrissey yeah Emma yeah she, she was pretty Emma enough. Morrissey yeah she's lovely I, you know again just you know, casting is all done on Zoom now. I don't think we we didn't we didn't meet anybody. Uh, everything was all Zoom, and you just get a sense of somebody, and then you meet them in person, and they just all came to life. And just the locals, the towns, it just felt so real, and everybody was everybody was warm. And Chris really sets a, a great tone on the set. It was never pressured. I mean, we did a lot of movie making in twenty five days. It's a lot of movie to make, um, and we you know, but it was all fun. It was I mean, it was we were all professional we we're all moving along nobody was wasting time but a good time was had by all 